This class is divided up into three sections, transmission lines, wave propagation, and antennas. For each of these three sections, we'll have two in-class projects. I'm going to now introduce the first in-class project. Please go ahead and get out your in-class notebook or in-class notebook computer file for you to take notes in. Turn to the first page of your notebook because in a few minutes you'll be adding some notes to it. In the evening of July 17, 1996, flights were taking off from J John F. Kennedy Inter International Airport as usual. One of these flights was TWA 800, on its way to Rome, Italy, with a stopover in Paris. On board were 230 people. Here on the left is an earlier photograph of that aircraft, and on the right side of this slide is a map of the beginning of the flight path for that evening. About 12 minutes into the flight, other pilots in the area reported seeing a large explosion. Later it was confirmed that TWA 800 had exploded and crashed into the Atlantic Ocean. Here is the flight path again. Now I'll tell you that the rectangles at the end of the flight path represent areas where different pieces of the wreckage were recovered. The pieces that were found were used to reconstruct the aircraft, as shown on the right of the screen, so that investigators could study the pieces and try to understand what went wrong. Although terrorism was initially suspected, no evidence of criminal activity was ever found. So then the question became, what caused the airplane to explode during a routine flight and under routine flying conditions? The fuel tanks certainly contributed to the explosion, but something must have ignited the fuel tanks such as a spark, bringing into question whether there were any electrical problems with the airplane that evening. Here is an image of the basic electrical system of a Boeing 747. This image was included in a National Transportation Security Board presentation about the TWA 800 explosion. Electrical power is generated at each engine and cockpits uh, switches are used to distribute the power throughout the airplane. As shown here, there are many cables and wires in an aircraft used to distribute the power and electrical signals throughout the airplane. These wires are grouped into bundles, and the bundles are grouped into raceways. No fires and no smoke was reported prior to the explosion. This indicates that if there was an electrical problem on the airplane, the problem must have had a fairly close or direct contact to the fuel tanks. In fact, from a maintenance manual for the Boeing 747, we can see that there are electrical connections to the fuel tanks. As shown on the left side here, there are seven fuel probes in the fuel tank to gauge how much fuel there is. Also, there is one compensator and wire connections in the tank. Here's a final image I'll show for now relating to TWA 800. It shows the electrical connections between the fuel tank, the cockpit, and is indicated by the red dashed line, a connection to engine number four. From the investigation into the crash, another piece of information we have about the explosion of TWA 800 is that the pilot reported a crazy level of fuel flow to the engine number four about 2.5 minutes prior to the explosion. This hints at some issue with either the probes or electrical components associated with monitoring of the fuel flow. So this brings me to our first design challenge for this part of the course. Throughout an entire Boeing 747 aircraft, there is roughly 171 miles of wiring. Here is a view of the wiring in the cockpit area of an airplane. Your challenge is to design a system that allows you to check the wiring in an aircraft to make sure it is functioning properly. As part of this system, you will also want to be able to check the connections between the wires and the electrical components at each end of the wire. There are a couple things you should keep in mind as you develop your testing system. First, plan on not being able to access the full length of each wire or cable because many of them are buried deep in the aircraft behind other components and so forth. Second, you're not al allowed to damage or alter the wiring while testing it. 
because you want it to remain operational after testing it. Okay, so now turn to your first page of your in-class project notebook and spend, say, three minutes writing out what the design challenge is and how you would solve it knowing what you know today. Write down whatever comes to mind. Later we will compare the design ideas you come up with today with the hopefully improved designs you come up with in a couple weeks when we finish up this part of the course.